on the subject of the anointing is transferable. Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. And yes. two things that Jesus said that the Lord had anointed him to do was heal the brokenhearted and to bring recovery of sight to the blind and set at liberty those that were bruised. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, the same anointing that Jesus operated in is in us and the anointing is transferable. This is hard for us to wrap our pea brains around this. It is just hard for us to comprehend that the sovereign God of the universe would place the same anointing of his precious Holy Spirit that he placed upon Jesus, that he would place that same anointing upon the Old Testament saints and upon the New Testament saints and upon us, the saints in Christ today. That same anointing that was upon Jesus is in us. And the anointing is transferable. Now let's go to the word of God and see some of the many examples in the scriptures concerning the anointing being transferable. The anointing was in Elijah's mantle in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 8. The anointing upon Elijah was transferred into his mantle, into his cloak. And when Elijah hit the water of the Jordan River with his mantle, what happened? The Jordan River was parted, and he and Elisha walked across on dry ground. And then Elisha watched as Elijah was taken up to heaven, and his mantle fell to the ground. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 13 through 14, Elisha picked up Elijah's mantle. He went back and he stood at the Jordan River. And Elisha hit the water with that mantle and said in verse 14, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he hit the water and the water parted and Elisha walked back across the Jordan River that had parted. The anointing in Elijah's mantle was transferred into the water of the Jordan River. How do we know? Because the anointing in the Jordan River healed Naaman's leprosy. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 10 through 14. Elisha told Naaman to go and dip in the Jordan seven times. Naaman got mad at first and refused to do it. Oh, but later he repented. He went, he got in that Jordan River, he dipped seven times, and he was healed of leprosy. Now, would Naaman have been healed if he had washed in any other river? No, because Elisha had said, go and dip in the Jordan River. Naaman's obedience activated the anointing in the Jordan River, and he received healing. The anointing went into the Jordan River. When Elijah and Elisha hit the water with Elijah's mantle. Oh, but we know that the anointing was also already in that Jordan River. Because remember in Joshua chapter 3 verses 15 through 16. When the feet of the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. When they stepped into the Jordan River, what happened? The river parted. And the water rolled all the way back to the city of Adam. And where was Jesus baptized? In the Jordan River. And the, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the Jordan. And Jesus carried, he bore our sins all the way back to Adam. Hallelujah. Oh, and let me give you a New Testament example of the anointing being transferred in the water. In John chapter 5, verses 2 through 4, there was a great multitude of people at the pool of Bethesda. They were blind, they were crippled, they were sick, and at times an angel went down and stirred, troubled the water, and the first one into that water was healed. Now, did the angel heal that person? No. 
No, no, the anointing that was transferred into that water healed the first person that stepped down into it. So the anointing was in Elijah's mantle. The anointing was in the Jordan River. The anointing was in the pool of Bethesda. And the anointing was in Elisha's bones. 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 through 21. Elisha died, and some men were burying a dead man. And when they let that dead man down into the grave of Elisha, as soon as that dead man touched the bones of Elisha, that dead man was raised back to life. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. The anointing was transferred from the bones of Elisha into the body of that dead man, and that dead man was raised back to life. The anointing was transferred from Elisha into Saul. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. The men of the city told the prophet Elisha, Oh, the water here is very bad and we can't drink it. Verse 20, Elisha said, Bring me a new jar and put salt in it. Verse 21, Elisha cast. He threw that salt into that water that was undrinkable. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters and there shall not be any more death or barren land. That water was so bad that not only could it, the people not drink it, but nothing grew around that water. It was so bad. But the anointing in Elisha was transferred into that salt. And when he threw that salt into that water, the water was healed. Hallelujah. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. So the anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. And the anointing was transferred from Elisha into meal, M-E-A-L, cornmeal. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 38 through 41. Elisha told his servant to boil stew for the young prophets to eat. Verses 39 and 40, the servant made stew out of wild gourds. The only problem was the gourds were poisonous. Verse 41, Elisha said, bring meal. And he threw the meal into that pot of poison stew. And it took the poison out of that stew. Why? Because the anointing that was in the prophet Elisha was transferred into that meal. And it took the poison out of that pot of stew. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. The anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. And the anointing was in Elisha's staff. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. The Shunammite woman's son had died. What did she do? She took him up and she laid him on the prophet Elisha's bed. Why? Because the prophet had slept in that bed. And the anointing is transferable. There's a true story recorded of Smith Wigglesworth. He was preaching in a town and he stayed at a woman's house and her husband was an alcoholic. He was mean. He was, he was not born again. And this woman wanted Smith Wigglesworth to pray for her husband. But it came time, the revival was over, Smith was leaving, and as he went out the door, the woman said, oh, Smith, you didn't pray for my husband. And Smith Wigglesworth turned around and said, don't change the sheets. Why? Because the anointing is transferable, and it wasn't but a couple of days till that husband was under such great conviction that he fell on his knees, he repented, he cried out, cried out to God and was gloriously saved. Why? Because the prophet of God had slept in that bed and the anointing was transferred from Smith Wigglesworth into those sheets and the man couldn't take it. Why? Because the anointing came upon him and he was gloriously saved. Now, verses 20 through, through, through 25. This Shunammite woman, she ran to the prophet Elijah. He saw her coming and he told his servant Gehazi in verse 26, run and ask her, is it well with thee? 
Is it well with our husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. What a woman of faith. Her son is dead, and she is saying, it is well with the child. Verse 27, she came and she fell down before Elisha. Verse 20, 29, Elisha told his servant Gehazi, take my staff in your hand. Lay my staff upon the face of the child. Verse 31, Gehazi did it, but nothing happened. Elisha knew that the anointing that was in him had been transferred from his body into his staff. That's why he told his servant Gehazi, take my staff and lay it upon the child. So why did the anointing that was in Elisha's staff not go into that dead child and raise the child from the dead? Because Gehazi was carrying the staff and the doubt, the unbelief, the sin in his life short circuited the anointing that was in that staff. Doubt, unbelief, sin, whether it's a, sin, a hidden sin of the heart or an outward sin, doesn't matter. A sin in a person's life will stop the anointing of the Holy Spirit from flowing in that person's life. How do we know that Gehazi had sin in his life? Because in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 15 through 24, when Naaman had leprosy, Naaman was so thrilled at being healed from leprosy, he offered the prophet Elisha money and changes of clothes or raiment. Elisha said, no way am I going to take your money or your clothes. Verse 20, Gehazi said, well, my master Elisha may not want the money and the clothes, but I'll sure take some of it. Verse 22, Gehazi, he took the money, he took the changes of clothes, he hid it, and then he lied after he had lied to Naaman, and he said, oh, two, two young prophets have come unexpected, and I, my master has sent me, he's changed his mind, and he will take some of your money and your clothes after all. He outright lied to Naaman. Verse 23, Naaman gladly gave Gehazi more than he had asked for. Verse 25, Gehazi went and he took that, the money and the clothes, he hid it, then he went back and stood before his master Elisha. And Elisha asked him, where have you been, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, thy servant went no whither. In other words, to me, I haven't been anywhere, liar, liar. Verse 26, Elisha said, Went not my heart with thee, or didn't my spirit go with you and see what you did? Verse 27, and Gehazi, just for that, the leprosy of Naaman is going to come upon you. And he went out of Elisha's presence, leprous, as white as snow. So that's the reason that we know that when Gehazi was carrying Elisha's staff and laid it on the dead boy, nothing happened. Gehazi was a liar. He was a thief, and he was living in sin. He had that hidden sin of greed, and he was a thief. In his heart, he had that. He harbored it. So he short-circuited the anointing. He stopped the anointing from working. The anointing will not operate, will not flow through an unclean vessel. You can't expect to live in sin and expect to still flow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, back to the story in 2 Kings chapter 4, in verses 32 through 34. Elisha went to the Shunammite woman's house. He went into the room where the dead boy was, and Elisha prayed, verse 34. Elisha then laid his body on that dead boy's body. He put his mouth upon the boy's mouth, his eyes upon the boy's eyes, his hands upon the boy's hands. He stretched himself upon that dead child, and the flesh, the skin of that dead child began to get warm. The anointing is what? It's transferable, verses 35 through 36. Elisha laid down again on that child, and the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. He was raised from the dead. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. The anointing that was in Elisha's body was transferred into that dead boy and raised him back to life. 
Oh, I love it. The anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. The anointing was transferred from Elisha into a stick, wooden stick. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. The prophet Elisha was with a group of men. And they were cutting down trees, verses 5 through 7. One of the men's axe head fell into the water, sunk down into the bottom of the water, and he cried out, Alas, master, or oh, good grief. And the Jewish would be, oh, he vague. My goodness, what are we going to do? He said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed, verse 6. The man of God said, Where fell it? Don't you love the King James? Where fell it? And he shewed him the place. He showed him the place where the axe head fell into the water and sunk down to the bottom. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Elisha said, pick it up. And the man reached out his hand and took it. What are the chances of someone throwing a wooden stick into the water and a heavy metal iron axe head? that was had sunk down to the bottom of that riverbed what's the chances of that heavy axe head floating back to the surface none there's no way this could happen in the natural but the anointing is transferable hallelujah the anointing in elisha was transferred into that stick and when he threw that wooden stick into the water the anointing was in, that was in that stick Cause that metal axe head to swim, to float up to the surface of that water. So, the anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. It was in a stick. There's even an example in the Word where God chose to place his anointing directly into an object. And it not be transferred from a person to that object. What is an example? The anointing was in Moses' rod. Exodus chapter 4 verse 17. God told Moses, take this rod in your hand and with it, with the rod, you will perform signs. And Moses used that rod to stretch it forth and cause the ten plagues to come upon the Egyptians. You can read it in Exodus chapter 7 through 10. Moses lifted up his rod and God divided the Red Sea. Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. So, the anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. It was in a stick. It was in Moses' rod. Now, Everybody says, oh, that's Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament and see some examples of the anointing being transferred. The anointing was in Jesus' garments. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 27, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She spoke her faith. What activates the anointing? What causes the anointing to work? Faith. Verse 29, the woman was instantly healed. Verses 30 through 31. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue, power, healing, uh, the anointing had gone out of him, turned him about in the press. And said, who touched my clothes? Verse 31. His disciples said, the multitude is strong in you. And you asked, who touched me? She touched the hem of Jesus' garment by faith. Jesus immediately knew that the anointing had gone out of his body. Her faith caused the anointing to flow from Jesus' body, even down to the hem, down to the border, down the teeth seat of the fringe on his prayer shawl. And it went, the anointing went into her body, and she was instantly healed. Why were all those other people that were thronging him, pushing up against him, touching him, why were, weren't they healed? 
because they did not touch him by faith. Faith is what activates the anointing. In Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 through 36, men brought all who were sick, and that they begged to only touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And the scripture tells us that all who touched the hem of his garment were made perfectly whole. Why were all those people healed when they touched the hem, the border of Jesus' garment? Because the anointing is transferable. The anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elijah's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. It was in the stick. It was in Moses' rod. It was in the hem of Jesus' garment. And the anointing was in Peter's shadow. Acts chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. They brought the sick into the street, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. A multitude came bringing the sick and those with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. How were they all healed? By Peter's shadow that was cast upon them as Peter walked by. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. Peter was so saturated in the anointing of God that the anointing was even in his shadow. And people were healed just by him walking by. Hallelujah! The anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. It was in a stick. It was in Moses' rod. It was in the hem of Jesus' garment. It was in Peter's shadow. And the anointing was in Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. God wrought or worked or performed special miracles. How? By the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The anointing that was in Paul was transferred from Paul's body into the handkerchiefs and the aprons, and when they were laid upon the sick, the, the sick were healed. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. What is the anointing? The anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 through 18, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, what, what are we supposed to do? They shall lay hands on the sick. And what will happen? They shall recover. Yeah. Jesus said that we believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. They would be healed. Why? Because the anointing within the believer is transferred into the person who is sick and they are healed. The believers, when we lay our hands upon cloths and when those prayer cloths are taken and, and laid upon the sick or the sick holds them in their hands, that the anointing goes from the believer's body into those claws. When uh, the sick touch those claws, they are healed. Why? Because the anointing is transferable. Oh, the word Christ means the anointed one. And we are what? Christians. Yes. Acts chapter 11 verse 26 says, And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. We are Christians. We are little Christ. We are little anointed ones. So go, impart, transfer the anointing to others. God uses us today as his delivery boys, if you will, to deliver his anointing. So go, deliver, transfer his anointing to those who are hurting, to those who are bound, to those who are captive, held in bondage by the enemy. Why? Because we saw today that the anointing was in Elijah's mantle. It was in the Jordan River. It was in the pool of Bethesda. It was in Elisha's bones. It was in salt. It was in meal. It was in Elisha's staff. It was in a stick. It was in Moses' rod. It was in the hem of Jesus' garment. It was in Peter's shadow. It was in Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons. And the anointing is in you. Yes. You are a Christian. You are a little Christ. You are an anointed one. So go transfer that anointing.
encouraging to others in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and we praise you that your anointing is upon each and every one who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. And it's your command, it's your instructions that these signs shall follow them that believe. And one of these signs is that they shall lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you that we go forth, we are obedient to lay our hands upon the sick and we have the promise of your word that the sick are going to recover yes. because the anointing yes. is transferable. And the Father placed the same anointing that was upon the Lord Jesus in each of us. And we are going forth and we are going to be obedient. We are going to be little Christ, little Christians, little anointed ones. And we're going to be used of you in obedience to lay our hands upon the sick. And we have the promise of your word that they shall recover. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, amen.